better in here. Uh, I, I don't know if they really need to, man. Up. Oh, Still gonna be sitting here going, well, we want free space for Low to get Blink Dagger before we do anything with him. And the same thing kind of goes battle. for S4. So yeah. we GM and RK in the meantime just stack up the jungle and they'll take it in turns of just doing some clearance. And then Admiral Bulldog, we've seen him time and time again in the off lane, just they easily, easily control the off lane. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're actually seeing from uh, from PR, they're actually running aggro. They're bringing Skywrath, ES, and Razor up north. One thing we didn't mention is that PR is missing a player. They have Wuja Zik as a stand in. Uh, so, FNG, their captain and usually support player, great drafter by the way, uh, picked up the, the Bristleback role. So, obviously, he's not a support Bristleback. Yeah, it looks like they want to put um, the Bristleback solo versus Bulldog. Uh, Bristleback is actually quite good versus the bear. Uh, he can kill it if Bulldog is not paying attention because obviously the, the quick spray is physical. So, you battle. might be able to take down the bear. Uh, with good uh, with good spell usage and they're gonna go try it in offensive um i don't know Th this one can go either way honestly both lanes are really strong uh it's just a matter of who initiates first and how to be honest uh, i'm looking forward just to that lane and i guess it's a profit sort of mid so that's interesting <laughs> I, I love i love the fun between loader and them already like he, he managed to kill off a tree and, so he's already claimed his first blood now, Loder will be backed off this top route, and what a time to have it done. It's a DD route. Moon, Moon, Moon. He doesn't Moon. want to take it. No, no, he what? doesn't. Why? Wait, why? Why? Right, is Static Link at least keeping up with Loder? But I have no idea. He had time to take it because the Fisher was blocking Loder. I don't think, they, I don't think he saw it. it. I don't think he even saw it underneath the Treant, which was crazy because the Treant was glowing blue. And now, now RK is going to uh, cover to take the DD route. What, 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 just, just wait. Okay, try. that's awkward. I don't know. I can't, I can't draw it on the low ground, so I draw it on the high ground. No, even that doesn't work. It's, it's covered by shrubberies. Question mark. There we go. And Ak is gonna... He, he might get a first blood on that Prophet. Prophet needs to be really careful. If he gets... Look, he's not using his... He's taking he's a spell yet. Twice. He's gonna take Glimpse. Yeah, that's a really nice one from Ak. He's in range and for him too. Look, but look him. the drag back with the, with, the move, with the way he moved out of that uh, one. With five napalm stacks. Oh, uh, PR gonna be really sad about that whole DD rush. <laughs> The only way he could try to survive was going to the tower, to be honest, because Aki wouldn't dive so far, like, he's really squishy, but going on the right, that's a dead profit, 100%. I'm not sure he would have made it, though, but it was worth trying, I guess. Yeah, that did run. Pretty sad for PR. I don't know how they didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> I know that it. <laughs> Loda definitely did. The funny thing yeah. is, too, like, Loda also decided not to pick it up as he went back. But see, he walks straight back over the top of it, but, but to do it would have taken like a fraction of a second longer to get away from the Razor. Yeah, he didn't want to risk it, which is fine. I mean, he's not going to turn in to attack them anyway, so... Yeah. Was was um, was good decision making from him, I guess. The the thing is, I'm watching this Bristol back a bit, and he's, I, I don't think he's going to win his lane at all. Like, right now, he's... Yeah. He's not doing so well on his lane. He's almost out of mana already. Like he's harassing the bear sure, but doesn't like bull, uh, bulldog's micro will never he will never let his bear farm. He's like his best bu best buddy, so no way he's letting him down. <laughs> yeah, and Admiral Bulldog's under no pressure anyway, so resummoning his bear isn't gonna be much of a problem for him. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen him on a one versus one lane, which is I mean not, I don't want to say easy for him, but he's just laundry versus uh, a bristleback, so it's not gonna be that hard. C compared to what he used to fight up against, like yeah, like, yeah. When you really, everybody wants to shut him down. Yeah, and like there's no there's no smoke rotations to worry about either. Like the only thing he's gonna worry about is Nature's Prophet TPing in to gank him. But right yep. now, like Cheshire Cat's just having a hard enough time battling up against S4. Yeah, yeah, I don't, and anyway, he has tangles, and like they have nothing to, to you know, slow him or stun him as Bristleback didn't take goo yet. So, yeah, the, talking about this nature's profit, like he's really struggling versus S4 right now. I mean, he has okay last hit, but you can see that S4 pressures him quite, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, S4 doesn't have that much, uh, that much last hit, but since he got first blood, it's still okay, you know, he's gonna get good timing on his blink dagger. And, and considering it's Batrider anyway, we don't really have to care that much about last hit so early on. Yeah. Like, his base exactly. damage was completely utterly shattered. Um, yep. One thing, though, which I kind of want to look at, just as I'm waiting for Moon as well as we just stick to back up a little bit further, uh, is Loder actually coming over? Yeah, he's coming over. He was considering yep. the clamps, but now he just gets static linked up and he instantly has to run away. Within Cursive Shot, they can actually get a nice long duration on that, but there's nothing mm -hmm. more. 
Uh, but the yeah. stack, the stacks wise, like there's currently two sets of alpha wolves and a set of and a set of centaurs, but no yeah, cans being stacked cool. up yet from alliance, which for me is surprising. Yeah, it's a bit surprising, <laughs> although. The top lane doesn't require that much. Well, I mean, they just need levels on Loda. Yeah, he wants to go. Uh, man, if, if he GM a shackle, I would have thought maybe it'd be possible. But he went win. Oh, oh that's a really good one. Yeah. That's a really good Fisher. That's no. first blood. Awesome Fisher. Yeah. Well, well, it gets to be our second blood. And it's all about creeps as well. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah that's second blood, my bad. Yeah, that's that was an awesome Fisher from Shaker. And you, that's the ward. I'm not even sure the ward get vision of it. Actually, I think there's a creep. But yeah, well, as you said, I think it would be worth it for Alliance to stack because what they need in that in that game isn't items. I mean, items. They just need good timing on Badfather's Dagger and level six on Lord. That's what they need. And then it's going to be really awesome. He's right. diving in so deep right now. He comes oh, yeah. to the tree line. Let's make sure he gets to run himself around. But he's trying to bring down FNG, and he's got him. The trees are actually blocking, blocking, blocking him up long enough that Admiral Bulldog can get the last hit in. Now Cheshire Cat, the bear, it kind of needs an entangle to make sure that Cheshire Cat gets away from Radiant's Bulldog. Who runs on another yeah. tree, pulls the bear. In. First it can't get it, and now he's actually Classic got level Bulldog. 6 as well, so ultimate form is available. Cheshire Cat sticking with it, but Admiral Bulldog's got nothing left. He's got 1,000 gold, which totally spent some money on. He <laughs> dodges the attack, and then the entangle into Cheshire Cat. Four uh, life points he dropped down to. The bear's in range again, and needs another entangle to give him some space. There's your attack. He dodges it again with the ultimate form. No entangle, they're coming in the last point, but S4 arrives on bottom lane. Two points for the napalm stack, and unfortunately for him, he's actually out of mana. He can't buy a fly himself away from this one. He's going to take it so he can munch to the tree line, but it's Nasal Goo versus basically, uh, well, Sticky Napalm, and it looks like Nasal Goo will fly again, but it looks like Bristleback with no wall path, he can't catch up to S4. It's a very what weird a and unusual diving. Well, what a play by Bulldog, honestly. And top lane, yeah, they're going top lane. Yeah, they, oh, no, it's, it, it's backed up. They've already done it now. I was thinking, like, if if, if the fissure was coming up cooldown straight away, it'll be a little bit closer, but yeah, it was still off. I mean, it's it's a shame that uh, Prophet actually blocked the Bristleback with his triumphs. I think they would have got the kill on S4 because he, he came there, but he, he had nothing with off mana. It was, I, I don't want to say a misplay, but it was really but dangerous for him. Oh, yeah. The all falls in. We just, whoa, 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 we just think. What is this? Uh, yeah, he he's, wanted he's to get. Not, he's not blocked by the Fissure, though. I yeah, he wanted to get one extra, you know, f um, arcane on. Oh, the Prophet Ultimate not bouncing on Akira, he was so lucky. Or did, or did he bounce on him? No, he didn't. It hit the it creep right, right next to him, the bounce up and towards EGM. And he got somehow. Loaded down to oh. bottom lane. He gets a clap on FNG. Unfortunately, the loader, six. the tower is not taking any damage onto the Bristleback. Yeah, and he's not level 6, so there's no split available. I mean, everything is going... Uh, it should be going wet for... Look at the... That's the Bulldog dive. You see the wave for, for them, and they have trouble because they have nothing to outpush. Um, they need the uh, S4. There. He's, uh, he's, he's going there now. And he just picked up a regeneration rune as well, so Loda goes for the clap. He needs to firefly out most of this creep wave, yeah. however, before the tower can do anything. It looks like... Whoa, S4? Okay, he comes Dyer's in, they just make sure they deny up the tower. So they let it go. FNG's gonna be pushed back here. He's actually three napalm stacked up, but there's no mana for the lasso. Now there is. He actually has two stick tacks for Barbell too. And there's your lasso. Lotus got another climb in Barbell. He's waiting in front of FNG. So they bring down the bristle back. Should also point out too the fact that EGM was able to survive up, up, up in the top lane. This was probably like 30 seconds ago, but he was yeah. on like maybe 10 life points running away from PR, but still managed to survive. That's a good kill. The Bristleback is really, really shut down. That game, you can see that he has 15 last hit to his name, which is very little, and he's 0 and 2 now. Although he got a tower, but that was denied. Uh, so yeah, the, the the game should be going well for Alliance. I mean, they're they're giving kills uh, on the top lane, with the, which they shouldn't, in my opinion. Uh, they can just play safe with the heroes they have. They have glimpses if they dive really far. Uh, there's gonna be a move on the top lane, but they have a ward watching that, so they will Radiant's take it only if they think they can win it. Bristleback's diving oh, really far out. Oh, he glimps out. You can't see if he directly into that. But he's there long he's enough to make sure that Arcade attack. goes down. But there's Bulldog. only bouncing through when you have a Bulldog. He doesn't want to summon up his bear at the moment. He's just going to basically accept his own fate. The Fusion, the Seal, and four heroes moving in from Power Rangers. We really take another two kills and I'll take a tier one tower on this top lane. Dyer's no, so that's not really possible. Attack. EGM's hovering around, but he can't deny this. That's the very aggressive nature of that team. Oh, Loda wants to defend it. He has level Dyer's six. Yeah, they're teaming him, but Loda is quite like in that's the zone. Arcade's here. Loda goes down. They're going to get a kill as well over on over on this disruptor. The nasal goo was slowing down long enough. There's no stick charges for anything else, but with quill spray and one attack from Razor from range, they get the kill. 
Yeah, that's some really sloppy play from Lions, I have to say. Um, l the thing is that, yeah, Loda should have instant split if he wanted to, like, especially because the Skyros is maxing silence, which is fine. I mean, now he has five seconds silence. It's really huge. And the Lions have nothing to s protect Loda when he's being silenced. It's not going to be... I mean, they will have the Static Storm, for example, later on in the game, but Aki is not able to level 6, so they have no defensive wow. spells you whatsoever. Now, it's not... Whereas PR, they have Shaker, you know, some counter initiation, which Lion doesn't have right now. Uh, yeah, they gave away two kills in the tower. Um, they, they still have the better team fight, in my opinion, uh, if they do it right. I mean, the Alliance, Alliance's lineup is um, is really, how to say, built to play around the laundry, at least the way they use him. They can 4 versus 5 without any problem, because it's going to be bad rider catching one guy, they kill, they burst him down, and then they split on Panda. And they can, you know, maybe even win some fights if they have good positioning, or when Bulldog, like, uh, during the time Bulldog's farming. Dyer's so that's going to be Alliance's first plan. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. FG, come on, in this room, he's looking at him. The Ashik is too far away. The thing is that they're, you know, they're sitting on the ward, so Alliance has the upper hand for that one, and they have even have a sentry. Yeah. But at the same time, Bristleback is backed up. Yeah, and the they're, they're is in trouble. At, they're looking at Razor on the top lane. With three levels up in Glimpse, they can easily just drag him back at the moment. He's dead. And they're going to need to. Yeah, pull him back into the wall, and that means Moon just a little bit too far up right now. And uh, while well, Brewmaster, even committing the split, RK is so low on oh. life, 33 life points. He did cop the Prophet Ultimate, but luckily, Fib was one of the earlier bounces while in middle lane, and Paul being initiated on here. He's going to last you on a Cheshire Cat, but he needs more help. EGM flooding up the Dyer's power shots and the tower, while not attacking on a Cheshire Cat. It actually goes over to FNG. J4 got dice in the meantime, but. The play by FNG is allowed to get another kill here in the mid lane up against the Batrider, who is the highest net worth for Alliance. Yep, yeah, really good play by FNG. He got the power to red switch as well to in, so he had enough mana and then the sticks so he could chase. Else, else, for wouldn't die. On the top lane, good decision making by Loda to use the split, else, they probably wouldn't even kill the Razor. Um, with the Fisher from Shaker, who would have prevented Loda from splitting if he decided to do You know, if he hesitated one second and extra. Uh, a kill wasted, so yeah, good play from Alliance though. Uh, S4 did die, it's delaying his dagger, which is a problem. But yeah, that's what's gonna happen, what happens on the mid lane now. They're just gonna take down towers when the split is on cooldown, so... The clock is ticking for Alliance, to be honest. They need Bulldog to have Dyer's items right now, and he's really, really shut down that game. He has only 40 CS to his name, which he usually has way more. Dyer's At least I think so. He has 3 deaths, that's the main problem, to be honest. And because of that, man, like, he, he, he kind of had to skip the Radiance build. Like, Radiance in this game would have been really nice Dyer's for him. Dyer's middle yeah. tower is under attack. He just can't afford it now. Because the, the pressure thing applied by PR too early. Just go back to talk about when the Brewmaster all the accounts. It's been a very long time when it's a split. And even when it's up, and I think they can. Like, S4 getting caught out now here in the middle lane. 10 to 6 already. Yeah. And they will take out this mid town with a bat right on the sidelines. So, but the Blink Dagger is taking way too long to come up. They need fighting items now. Radiance that bear needs to be able to survive. But getting nasal good up and cool straight out. They're going to lose Dyer's this bear as well. The Fisher tower connects to that from Bulldog. He does have a resummon, but they lose a tier 2 tower. The bear's back on the, ri on the cooldown again. And attack. the rotation's coming to the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. With a PR back who's almost yeah. finished up a Vanguard. This team is so aggressive. It's, it's really awesome to see them play. Uh, they play so aggressive. Look at them. They're pressuring Alliance a hell lot. And they force them to do really stupid mistakes, like as when S4, you know, just stays behind the tower in range for a, a slow from Skyrise and a Fisher. That's that's a very basic mistake, and obviously he's gonna die, and he's just giving a kill that he doesn't need to give. You know, S4 but that's in. just because of the pressure. He's flying yeah, around, good. but they've already cleaned the tree line, tree line off there, so it's not really gonna be anything when you're affected. And now Fisher blows his out by this one. Arcade goes down the ultimate, he couldn't trap anyone inside the wall. Now Master will go on Nature's Prophet, but he's also got mech for this engagement. So all the damage which has been dealt is going to be turned around. S4, Firefly wears off. He's caught in the tree line. They even seal him up for very good measure. Plants the field into the corner. S4 has got a small little part to freedom, but the Fissure instantly blocks that one down. And now into the tier 2 tower. Power Rangers don't lose a single hero. There is... There's very little that Alliance can do to stop this kind of snowballing. Alliance is getting stomped. There's fallen. no other word for that. I'm sorry, but like it, it's 12 minutes in and it's 7.5k gold advantage already, which is huge yep. at that stage. So right now it's just four Rangers stomping Alliance, and with their lineup they can even get rush, and they might be looking to end the game now. Uh, one thing that has to be mentioned is the the importance of that Skyrise pick for them, and they second picked it, first pick. I mean, it, it was their first um, pick phase. Um, the the ancients see 
shield, you know, it introduces the magical resistance for 45%, which is used when you face Razor with max plasma field, when you face Earthshaker, when you face Nature's Prophet. Uh, so it's huge magic damage. Loda doesn't take anything. He has one HP, but two spells at this moment bursting down. So um, it's pretty hard for him to position, and as you can see, he's really far away from Link Dagger. He, he has 24 CS, and he died three times, so now he has 29 that I said he just clapped. But um, yeah, it's gonna be a really hard game for Lions. The, their top farm is Bulldog, but Lone Reed doesn't achieve anything with um, that level of farm. He snowballs after, but you know, the midfield hammer is not gonna change anything. No, it's, it's just a Maelstrom. Like, if there was control, if they even had Badger and Maelstrom together, maybe you'd be a little bit more fearful of the damage coming out from the bear. But yeah. the bear gets destroyed as well because he's trying to stay on the front lines the entire time and keeps getting quill stacked into it. And that, was, yeah. that was like one of the other things I was talking about with the loader. I, it's, it's happened time and time again. When you pick up a brewmaster and then you have like a brussel back go against you and you split. And I've seen it in the later portions of the game where it's actually better to stay in your initial form as opposed to split because you lose your splits almost like in the space of five to ten seconds. Yeah. That, that's how long it takes. But the quills just rack up and they just lose the, the life points just so quickly. Now look at FNG. Yeah, he's got himself a vanguard, he moves the front lines, he's taken up the tower. He just doesn't care at the moment. Hilarious thing is too, Razor still doesn't level up his ultimate. Like he's about but to crack it, level 9, hasn't even got it yet. And he's probably waiting for his agonist to level up that. What's really, you know, weird from Alliance is that they just stay 5 behind, I mean, no Bulldog move, but they are 5 behind the towers. Radiant's it's like they, like, sure top. PR has a great team fight, but their pushing power is decent. They will take down the tower, I'm not denying that, but it's not like they take, they, they take it down in, in a second or, you know, in 2 or 3 seconds. So Radiant's Alliance could be, you know, at least attack. have Batrider try to farm his dagger somewhere else in, their, in the uh, enemy's jungle or something. He's trying to force a solo kill right now. He has hit this nature's prophet six times with the bear and couldn't get a single entangle. Seven times with the bear. Uh, coming Eight up. times with the bear. And now he's actually going to get a stomp out. Yep, turns around. There's nine, ten attacks. Still has to do himself an entangle. Eleven attacks now. He's got he's one. Enough. He got it on the eleven. And that's going to be J4. But he's stomping it down. He's still got Echo Sun if he really wants to use it. And with the stomp, he's actually locked him in the corner. They're going to actually focus in bringing down the bear. But the bear's got face boots, so it moves out. They can keep the attack going and it'll be okay. The J4 is hiding in the three lines with the support support coming in. And we just think he's soloing the Batrider with the support coming in from the Fissure from Earthshaker as well as the four stuff of Nature's Prophet. They catch him out and Admiral Bulldog is going to try and keep himself away to safety. But the bear actually dies which in turn kills him off. <laughs> Yep, it's it's a really tough game for Alliance right now. Over 10k gold, the XP is, is flying as well. Yeah, everything is going wrong for Alliance, and as I uh, like, without this dagger on S4 on Loda, there's no way they can take a fight. Right now, they're getting really close to it. They're, uh, they have 15k, 1500 gold, sorry, on both of them. But that's not enough, and the timing is very unfortunate as PR decides to go for the base now. So, yeah, it's all going to be about this defense. I mean, all, even if PR is way ahead, then it they can win the, the next one, but they could end the game on that move. Let's see how Alliance decides to take that fight. It's gonna be really hard. Well, so far Alliance haven't taken anything. They're just armies of trees being created to help bring down this tower. EGM with level 4 power strike can take away a lot of life points and the Thunder Strike as well. Flame break. They just gonna mop up the creep way from range, but Brussel back. He doesn't care that there's a good defiance for the Vanguard. There's a nice shackle though over towards the Razor, but the Tunnel is still there. He's pulling out the damage from the Astro Hammer Bulldog there. They brought down the tower, and while the Dago people there's not a little thing go just yet, but there's more. With the plasma kill, there's too much damage to really repel it. And now Moon, well, one entangle is basically gone. They all start him down by Tertio Cat, giving more space to this race and also regenerate. Loader, Fissure holds him in position while FNG is right up in his face. And that's going to be bottom ranks. They're flying back to the Brewmaster. Maybe there won't be bottom ranks. The Agency one will trigger. The Shackle will not be able to light this time around. The trees are still working out in the melee ranks. And FNG, okay, the Woods is going to pull the Rune back into the fight, but they've already got the kill on the disruption now. Moon's going to get entangled, but FNG keeps the cool spray going, and Brewmaster split Skull, but Moon, again, pulling out this damage from the Lone Druid Bear, forcing it back on the front line. They get rid of the fire ruling, and the fish is flying off. It actually called out, well, S4, so he couldn't drag back FNG. More force out from Churchia Cat, and raise up, well, he's sent up in towards the air by the Storm Ruling, but back into the fight again. There's a lot of napalm starts in both here on the Bristol back. He's got to get rid of the Nan. Hello, Wing Dagger there from J4. Instantly gets a jump on the Lone Druid. Dyer's He's back to base. 30 seconds on the, on the, the sidelines as well as on cooldown for his bear. 
So the bottom ranks will go, and I'm wondering if the Lions are going to even try and take this. No, they're not. They say, this is enough. PR's got too much momentum. They just cannot win this game. Yeah, they're very nice. Um, they're very nice execution by PR. They didn't panic. They played their game. They went for the right items. The fourth half neck on profit, great usage. The right strategy, they didn't let the Lions breathe once. I mean, they didn't, you know, go back to farm when they had to push or push when they had to farm. They did everything right and they crushed the Lions. There's no other word. That's 18-minute game. And it wasn't even close for Lions to try to come back.